Sean from Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. All right, we're out of the uh, Whirlpool bottom mount refrigerator. Uh, complaint is that in the freezer section, there's some frost and ice buildup on the product. Uh, so basically, uh, what we're going to do is just open up both compartments, check for fan operation, check for temps, um, and then go from there. Uh, the tool you'll need to complete this repair is just a flathead screwdriver. All right, so I'm just going to open up the fresh fruit section. Um, just by touching the product here, I can feel that it's nice and cool. I'm going to go back to the vent, just place my hand back there. I get good strong airflow coming out. So I know there's no ice buildup in the freezer. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing with the freezer. Just open it up and, and uh, check the temperature of the product inside. All right, so we open up the freezer here. We can pull out the, uh, the rack. And in here we can see there's some ice and frost buildup on the food. Uh, the unit's still producing ice, so we know we have good temps in the freezer. Um, and I can also hear the evaporator fan motor running. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check underneath, uh, make sure our condenser fan motor is still running. Um, so let me uh, close this up. All right, so I'm just going to remove my... kick plate here. I'll go ahead and close the door at this point. And now basically I can actually hear the airflow. Um, you can put your hand in here and you can feel the airflow. So I know that that fan is running. So everything that mechanically needs to run is running right now. So we're going to go ahead and rule any of that stuff out. Um, what we'll do since this is the second time they've had this problem and it's just very very random. Uh, there's a uh, computer board that we'll go ahead and uh, replace that for them. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and replace the electronic control. Uh, it's located up inside our console here. To do that, I'm just gonna use my flathead screwdriver. And I actually have to, there's snaps all the way around that we are gonna try to get inside here. And Come on, there we go. And I'm just gonna pull it down all the way across. And I have my wiring harnesses here that I'm going to disconnect. And it'll pull out right like this. Now we can work with it on the counter. Okay, so first step I have to remove our light shield. It'll just pull off. Set that to the side. Now we'll flip this over. Inside here there are some tabs. We've got to push the tabs down. They're kind of difficult to push down. And once we push them down, we can flip it back over again. And this guy will swing open and expose our control here. And on it, there are two uh, harnesses. They have a tab on each one. So you press the tab in and pull them off. Okay, move that out of the way. So now we're just working with just this here. And what holds this in, you have a tab here and a tab here. So we'll just press the tab in gently so we don't break it. It'll pop up. Same with the other side. And then our electronic control will come out. So this is what we're going to replace. All right, we have our new one here, which somebody forgot to break for us. All right. So we're going to put it back in the exact same spot. Took the old one out. One part in. And there's that. So that's in there now. And just to make sure we have the little buttons, here's the old one. These are the buttons here. We want to just make sure we have them lined up before we put it all back together and just press on each one of the four spots and make sure that you hear the button or feel the button behind it. So now we're going to go ahead and start reassembling. So I'm going to put this back in place. I had removed the thermistor just so I could show you better. So put that back in. And then our two harnesses. One and two. Now we're going to roll this down. Make sure the wiring doesn't get in the way of anything and then snap it together. 
Then our light cover, just kind of line it up and then slide it straight back and snap it into place. So now we have this here, now we can go ahead and reinstall. So I'm going to go ahead and take my console, uh, get it into position, plug my harness in. And then it just snap it all into place. All right, and you can see it's flashing at us right now. Sometimes it'll flash here on the display, sometimes it'll have numbers. Either way, if you look at the paperwork that comes with it, we have to program this new computer with the refrigerator. And to do so, if we look at our model number tag over here, it'll tell you what code has to be entered into our new computer. So that's what we'll do now. All right, so now we're ready to program our new control. First thing is we have to hold the door switch in, which I am right now. We have to press the freezer cold button down three times. One, two, three, and then let go. And you see it now says PE for program entry. So we're going to hit the cold button down here on the freezer again. They all go to zeros. And we're going to enter in our code. First digit is zero, it's already there. The next one is one. So we'll push that up to a one right there. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and hold the uh, cold button down again until it blinks. And then we'll hit the light switch. And we just programmed it to work with this refrigerator there. And if you don't know them by heart, like I pointed out earlier, the unit does come with instructions on how to program it so that way you can't mess it up. All right, the original complaint was that the food in the freezer was getting ice and frost on it. Uh, so uh, we made sure that all the mechanical pieces were functioning, which they were. Uh, one of the few components we can't check is the electronic control, so we replace that. Thank you for watching another quality in-home diagnostic video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.